Berkshire Holdings Corporation is a publicly traded healthcare company operating in Denver, Colorado. We trade in the OTCQB and uh, the Toronto Venture Exchange. We built a very robust offering uh, of providing interoperative neurophysiological monitoring services and neurologist services. To give you an idea of our business, we provide an interoperative neuromonitoring technologist and a neurologist who work in an operating room environment. We partner with surgeons, we partner with hospitals, and we are growing at a rate of over 70% per year in terms of providing procedures. In 2019, we were involved in over 6,400 surgeries, which we managed. In 2020, we'll be involved in over 10,000 surgeries. And we are hoping to grow to over 15,000 procedures in 2021. We currently operate in eight states. We work with 131 surgeons. We employ 56 technologists and we have a retention rate of over 97% in working with surgeons on very complicated and invasive surgeries. Surgeries like neurosurgeries, complicated spine and back surgeries, ENT and vascular, typically open heart surgeries. The key to our business is in going out and partnering with surgeons and hospitals. And our model is very basic. We, we are an outsourced provider of technologists. Our tech will work with the surgeon in the operating room and our neurologist will work offsite with the team and provide oversight neurologist services. In our model, we've been very successful at going out and partnering with surgeons. Our, in our model, we are typically billing the insurance companies and the hospitals. In addition, we, are, we, we don't bill Medicare and Medicaid yet, but we are getting ready to be able to offer public pay services. In the United States, uh, we have grown fairly aggressively. When the company went public through an RTO in the TSXV in 2017, we were providing, we were doing about 1500 surgeries. In 2018, we did 3000. We've grown threefold to 2020, where we, we will do approximately 10,000 procedures. We, will, we anticipate growing by 50% next year. How this service works is we put a technologist into the operating room, it's our employee, and we are typically billing the insurance companies. That's how we get paid. We operate on about a 50% margin. We also are providing a neurologist we bill and we provide those services as well. In our model, we are attempting to really work with four constituents in the US healthcare system, the surgeons, the hospitals, the insurance companies, and the patients. In our model, we've been able to grow it quickly by partnering with surgeons. And a lot of our business has come from surgeons referring other surgeons. That's changing. We are starting to go after hospital contracts to induce hospitals to outsource to us. We also work very closely with the insurance companies and we are very focused on patient care going forward. The interoperative neural monitoring, monitoring industry is about a $2 billion industry. It's growing at about 10% per year. What's driving that is an increasing number of surgeries, an increasing number of chronic disorders, and additional awareness by the medical industry. The American Society of Anesthesiologists now recommends our service in any type of complicated surgery. Additionally, this service is now taught in medical school curriculums. In our model, we, we represent about 1% of the market now. We hope to grow it to four to 5% over the next 24 to 36 months. 
As I mentioned, you know, we're a small player right now. Uh, about 1.4 million surgeries took place last year using interoperative neuromonitoring technology services. We'll do about 15,000 procedures in 2021. Uh, our services, uh, we think, our quality of service is second to none. We recently received the JACO Award in the United States, which is a recognition of providing the highest levels of service in our field. Although we started off slowly, uh, we've grown quickly. And in addition to providing interoperative neuromonitoring services, we are launching a telehealth service in Q1. In our model, uh, in addition to providing the technologist, our neurologist is working remotely. Our model is predicated on having a neurologist available to work on the surgery. To date, we have used contractors. That is changing. We are recruiting now for our first two neurologists. We expect this to be a high growth portion of our business as we, as we replace contracting companies with full-time neurologists who will work for us. Neurologists working remotely are typically working on six to eight surgeries at a time. This will be a core part of our business going forward. And at three or 4,000 surgeries, you can contract and outsource. As we go to 15, 20,000 surgeries, we will make our business much more profitable by providing our own neurologist services. In addition, we anticipate being able to offer these services to our competitors as we develop analytics and other tools and to the hospitals themselves as we continue to partner with hospitals and facilities across the United States. This will be a key part of our business and one which we anticipate to be highly profitable for us. As we look ahead to 2021, we are focused on three corporate objectives, increasing scale. You know, we've done a very, we think we've done a good job of growing our business by three X over the last 24 months. It's all about scale and getting to increasing levels of volume as we move forward and expanding our footprint. Additionally, in the healthcare system in the United States, there are two ways to build. Either you have a contract with the insurance companies or you don't. Yet when the company started, it did not. More and more, we are striking deals with the insurance companies to partner with them going forward. And that will be a key part of our business strategy for 2021 and 22. And to date, we have about 30% of our revenue in contracts with the insurance companies. That's a key differentiator. Lastly, it's all about cash flow and improving multiples of cash flow. Uh, to that end, we have made tremendous progress over the last 12 months as we have brought the revenue cycle management portion of our business inside our organization. In Denver, and across the United States, we employ about 90 people. 20 of those are responsible for billing and collection. And since March of this year, we've been operationally cash flow positive. As we continue to go to scale and improve these procedures, we expect to be able to throw off multiples of cash flow in 2021 and beyond. Our revenue growth, just touching on that briefly, it has been primarily the result of doctors referring other doctors. Well-known surgeons, neurosurgeons, spine surgeons, referring our service to their colleagues. We work with 131 surgeons now in 56 facilities in eight states. That will continue. Part of our strategy going forward will be on M&A. We completed our first acquisition in January and February of this year. We acquired one of our competitors in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We acquired the company for about 7.7 .7 million. They generated about 6 million of cash revenue and about 3 million of cash earnings. There was a significant opportunity for us to grow our business and to acquire our undercapitalized competitors. We're also launching a channel strategy. We're doing that now to acquire business by partnering with the medical distributors, thousands of which exist in the United States and having them bring their business onto our platform. 
Hospitals are a key portion of our expansion plans. Hospitals are all trying to cut costs. And we think there's a huge opportunity for us to induce the hospitals to really cut their spending with respect to neurologists and interoperative neuromonitoring technologists and to use us going forward. And lastly, we, as we bring the neurologist service services in house, it will be a significant profit center for us as we move forward. As we look at other parts of our business, we generated about 18 million of revenue last year. Historically, uh, we have been growing our business. We generated about $5.7 million of US EBITDA and 2.5 million of net income. We see that this business growing by about 50% next year. And we see economies of scale starting to happen as we go to 50, 20, 25,000 procedures. This is really a recurring revenue model that we are developing by partnering with highly successful surgeons and hospitals and medical distributors going forward. Factors that will, in, that will really be significant in our growth will be increased scale, continuing to collect more money on each procedure, uh, bringing the revenue cycle management portion of our business in-house, and reducing our exposure to bad debt in the US markets. That coupled with partnering with the insurance companies and going in network, we think will drive significant returns on revenue and earnings next year. We have about 46 million shares outstanding fully diluted, about $50 million of accounts receivable. And our balance sheet is certainly open to more leverage in terms of debt. Our idea is really to focus on an S1 registration next year and ideally to uplist on the NASDAQ. My team, I build a very successful team of, of executives that I think are capable of taking this business and growing it by four times. My CFO was the CFO of Air Methods, the largest air ambulatory service in the US. His name is Trent Carmen. He helped grow the business from a $100 million market cap to a $2.3 billion exit. My VP of managed care was with Air Methods as well. He negotiated all the insurance contracts, moving over a billion dollars of revenue in network. My VP of revenue cycle management, who recently joined us, came from a private equity backed environment, managing over $800 million of out of network and in network billing. As we, we are very focused on governance as well, a majority of our directors are independent. Uh, one of whom is a well-known neurosurgeon from Florida. The other is the former CEO of the Colorado Hospital Association, and the other is a career banker. You know, I apologize for the problem in getting the, the screen up and running, but I, I'm happy, as is our investor relations team, to speak to any of you in the future about our plans. I think our company is probably the best position we've ever been for accelerated growth and success as we look at 2021 and beyond. With that. Thank you, John. So we got a few questions we want to go through from the live audience here. The first one, uh, maybe you can explain a bit the model, like how does your company being paid? Is it per neurosurgery basis? Yeah, great question. It, it's pretty simple. For each surgery, we bill the insurance companies and the hospitals, depending upon the type of procedure. We bill for our technologists and we bill for our neurologists. And then we are paid based upon the type of surgery, length of surgery, et cetera. We operate at about a 50% margin. Okay. The next one coming from Drake, uh, he was asking how long has uh, Assure been around and how much money has been invested in the past to de in developing such a new monitoring platform? Great question. The company was really founded in 2016, went public through an RTO process in May of 2017. There was about three and a half million dollars raised through that process. We have not raised any external equity since then. We did a small amount of convertible debt earlier this year to help fund the acquisition. We will probably look to the go to go to the markets in the near future as we look to shift from the TSX Venture Exchange to a U.S. listing. But to date, there's been very little dilution in the company. Yeah, so maybe the last one here from Kim Liu, and he's asking what, what sort of the upcoming milestone or developments that we can look for, for uh, from Assure? 
Yeah, great question as well. You know, we are focused on three key things and only three things. Scale is critical here because as you start to cover your infrastructure costs and scale, the new employees are gonna be technologists and neurologists. They generate revenue. So you wanna create more and more revenue producing employees in a recurring revenue model. That's critical. So potential investors should be looking at scale. They should be looking at our ability to strike deals with the insurance companies because that leads to certainty around revenue and payments. And then thirdly, it's all about cash flow. And they should be looking at the multiples of cash flow that we are generating. In Q2 in our recent press release around earnings, we disclosed that we were collecting cash at twice the rate that we were in Q2 of the preceding year. We expect that to continue. And ultimately, our goal is to be able to generate multiples of cash flow in 2021 and to create a model where we are we are we are a cash flow driven company on the back of recurring revenue on the back of these thousands of procedures that we're generating with hospitals and surgeons across the United States. Uh, right. uh, again, thank you for your time. So uh, we'll let you go this time. Thanks, Gilbert. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.